We are tracking severe weather moving right through central Iowa right now. So if you are hearing the sirens, I definitely want you to be inside right now. And for many farmers in this agricultural zone, their entire harvest has been lost. I don't know if it's just a pattern that we're in right now or if we just drew the short straw for a while. Yeah, it makes you uh, nervous. When you come down to the weather and talk about these heavy rains that we're getting that they used to not get in this way, that could take two, three inches of soil off in 10 minutes, that's their livelihoods. A lot of farmers don't want to talk about climate change, but they do and will talk about adverse weather conditions, and they're seeing more and more of it. The derecho wiping out an estimated 10 million acres, likely to cost billions of dollars. Oh yeah, look at this damage. Yeah, this is for sure derecho damage here still. I'm an Iowa native. I like to joke they took the Midwest girl and put me back in the Midwest because I know how to talk to farmers. We were one of the first companies to really come out and have a supply chain project, and it's evolved over time into our cover crop program. I'm tired of going to these conferences and just everybody talking about what needs to be done, but nobody getting in the field and doing it. Yeah, it is all about getting shit done. Ugh, I am so impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Good morning. How are you? For Unilever in the U.S., we try to source as locally as possible. And as a company, climate change is a very big threat in the sense of being able to source our ingredients. As it gets warmer, sourcing regions change. So if we lose our sourcing regions, that's a very big problem. And if you can't get these ingredients, how are we going to make products? It's a, it's a business threat in any company that doesn't look in that way is, is fooling themselves. So that's why the Climate Pledge is important to us and why we signed on, because collectively we can get a lot further than if we continue just by ourselves down this path. At Practical Farmers, our goal is to help stand up businesses and stand up farms that are gonna be resilient. All of our agronomists on staff are constantly talking to farmers, wanting to hear what they're challenged with, and then trying to find solutions that's gonna make them feel empowered to make a change. And so if I can help the Unilevers of the world realize, like, look, put your money here, and we will help you make good on climate smart goals that they have, like getting cover crops on the ground, then we can build other work off of that. My mantra is another farmer, another acre, another practice every day. Another farmer, another acre, another practice. I mean, if you think about geologic time, when it comes to soil formation, we're talking millions, billions of years. I mean, that's how long it took for soil to form on this planet, and we are losing it way faster than we can form it. We've already lost over half of our topsoil in Iowa. go. Okay. Cover crops are a crop that you plant in between primary crops to help with soil health. It's living, it's breathing, it's putting carbon into the soil. It is used to reduce loss of nutrients, to cover the soil up and reduce erosion. We realize that if we're going to be able to plant cover crops and have enough acres planted in the fall, we need people that can get cover crops in the ground. So how do we get the farmers though. If you give a farmer incentive to have cover crops on their farm, they will change the landscape, but the market hasn't paid them to do it today. But I think really if you have people holding new businesses' hands and saying this can be done and this is how we've done it, I think that'll work. It's time for companies to not just talk about doing their part, do their part. First and foremost, in farmers' minds, they have to be economically sustainable before they will be environmentally sustainable. I had a couple of farmers approach me and say, hey, I'm interested in trying cover crops, but it's, I don't know if I want to try this. And that was the first kind of foray into, there might be something here. It 
helped show how important good soil health is for farmers, because we did see some farmers who were even after the storms coming through and the significant damage that had been done. His corn didn't go down, his neighbors did, but his is still standing. Well, why is that? Right here, it's almost shin high. Yeah, this field looks fantastic, Doug. This is beautiful. You could take a pretty heavy rain. Oh, yeah. And these plants would, would cushion every raindrop that fell from the sky. The rain intercepts corn biomass and rye, and it doesn't hit your soil. So having all this biomass here cushions the soil surface and protects it. You know, you, you don't lose your soil. All of the children and grandchildren that are going to come after us are not going to be able to have the benefits of what we have here today. Unless well, we use conservation practices like you, right? So your farm fields are still going to be valuable. Well, that's, that's what I'm hoping. I hope that when I leave this world that my farms are better than when I got them. There isn't anything in life that's permanent. And everybody thinks this soil is permanent. It is not. No, it's not. And I'm such a lucky guy to have the soils that I have. The future of farming is, has got some real opportunities, but farmers have to take care of what we have today to have the opportunities for tomorrow.